Local time now for a check of weather. Eric Snodgrass of Nutrient joining us this weekend. Eric, when you look at the last 30 days, what's been the biggest surprise when it comes to moisture? It's, I think it's just the disparity across the country. I mean, you, you take a look at parts of the Mid-South getting over to the Southern Plains. I mean, Oklahoma and Texas, we've got places there that have had five to six times their normal amount of rainfall in the last 30 days. And then you go just north of it, corners of, of Kansas, Colorado, most of Nebraska, Western Iowa, pockets of Illinois, Minnesota. You have spots that are like, hey, share the rain a little bit. And they're looking at very, very dry conditions. And I would just have to tell you that the state that I'm most concerned about right now is going to be Nebraska. And it's not just what's come recently. It's what's still lacking in the soil moisture below. We've got very low soil moisture values in pockets of the Western Corn Belt, while soils are completely saturated across the southern tier of the United States and pockets of the Northeast. So when you look at that again, it's this story of who's been getting the rain and who's not. And this spring has not been very equitable in the delivery of that rainfall. Yeah. How does this spring compare to normal? <laughs> I, all over the place. I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody has told me like, yeah, this spring's been pretty much what I expected. I think most folks have been saying, wow, when is this going to quit so I can get in the fields uh, versus, hey, we got everything done early. Just don't send a frost my way. And yeah, we, we have some cool temperatures around the Great Lakes we're still dealing with. So some folks still battling with those cold late spring temperatures. But I think that you're going to look back on spring of 2025 and go, this didn't look anything like 23 and it definitely doesn't look like 24. Are we looking at something entirely different for this growing season than our past few years for reference? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Are there any anomalies that we need to really look at here in the preset map? Yeah. So the big thing over the next, you know, 10, 15 days is there are windows that are opening up. So you're going to see just a lot of places that have better chances of grabbing a stretch four, five, six days of, of open uh, planting windows. But you're also going to have guys that are going to be wanting to you know, put the pedal down to get things done by mid-May. And we still have some indications that once we get out there toward the middle of the month and beyond, we're going to go wetter. Right now, though, the big slowdown is in the southeast. So think cotton, peanuts. We do grow corn, soybeans, and other crops down there. I got spots in Georgia grabbing five inches of rain, and they were in drought. They were in drought, you know, just a week ago. So it's, again, the same issue with disparity. And what will happen, Tyne, is that you're going to get folks that are like, hey, the window open, bring the rain back. I need it back. And so we're going to be constantly asking a lot from the atmosphere going forward. We're watching dryness. We're watching the talk of drought this summer. Eric, the Climate Prediction Center just released an updated forecast for summer, saying yeah. that that Enzo neutral will continue through summer and early fall in the Northern Hemisphere. What, yeah. what does that mean? What could it mean for summer drought? You know, there's often a thought process that you have to have a La Nina in order to have a drought in the summer in the Midwest. You don't, right? The actual more important thing is the ocean temperatures off the Baja of California or in the Gulf of Alaska. And we've already got cold ocean temperatures off the Baja of California. If we kind of double whammy that up with cold water in the Gulf of Alaska or even all the way back over toward Japan, hugging the land, that is the recipe for problems. So when we see these summer forecasts for June, July, and August, specifically July and August, continuing to show up with these drier risks, like this newest forecast from the European model, which was just released, we can make a story out of that saying that this is a viable option for the atmosphere to choose. What is it? A big ridge in the central United States based upon the colder water that's existing right now off the coast of, uh, of the West Coast of North America. So here's the lesson. If in the next 40 days, those water temperatures warm, you know what's going on? The atmosphere is gaining momentum. If it gains momentum, we tend to have more frequent weather systems and no major risk of drought. If they stay cool, we tend to have greater risk of central United States drought. That's what I'm watching most closely over the next 45 days. Eric of Nutrien, thank you so much. I mean, right now, really, the corn market's acting like this crop is made, it seems like, <laughs> this week. Is that the case? That is exactly what we want to ask Dan Bossi and Tommy Grisafi next.